happy Friday, everybody. Uh, we promised we were going to just do a video kind of telling some behind the scenes from our trip to Champagne. We never got to it yesterday. So uh, we're going to get to it this morning. Although Carter is once again in hell. Uh, this time it's not the outlets, but you're on a backup computer and apparently it's not registering your camera or your microphone. Are you okay right now? It's been adversity for you this week. Yeah, you know, uh, the the whole, you know, God and attacking or giving his battles to his strongest soldiers thing. He's just, I mean, I understand it. He's just really laying it on thick this week. No homo. Mm. Hate when God lays it on thick. No homo. It's God. Yeah. Pause. Shout out Jaden Ivey. Okay, champagne stories. Uh, <laughs> what an intro. <laughs> so we were, when we drove back from Champagne, it's like a three and a half hour drive to my house. And then uh, Carter, you really pushed. That's really underappreciated in all this. It's like a six hour drive from your house to Champagne. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, one of my greatest abilities is the ability to push and or drive. Like I can, like if there's like a 26 hour drive, like I'll knock all that out. Mm -hmm. the only problem with that is like no matter how good you are at driving there's no way for you to be working your real job or sleepers and driving at the same time yeah. like it's, it's a mean, time management thing you know yeah, I, it definitely definitely pulled a late night uh the the, the, the past couple, couple days to yeah. make sure all my priorities are in line yeah anyways we i we alluded to this in the illinois purdue recap go watch that on the channel um but this was the most fun trip I think we have made. Uh, if you are new to us, last year we did a whole road show on the Field of 68 Network called College Hoops to Go, where we went to 10 different Big Ten campuses in the conference season, saw 10 different games. It was awesome. Got to We really vlogged all of it, right? Like we would show up, kind of get the feel for what the campus is like, hit the primetime spots. Uh, restaurants, bars, all that, try to infiltrate the student sections. Just a really, really, really fun time. And uh, it was great. By season's end, we were gassed, but like felt like we knew the Big Ten better than ever, just had a blast. This year, we knew we weren't going to do it again because I'm a father now and things are growing in other ways. We really embraced this previews and recaps model. And uh, – we were very picky on if we were even going to go to any games at all. Like, you know, we are in a spot luckily now where most of the time we can get credentialed for games if we want to go to them and cover them. But we really tried to save that for something special. The one game we knew we had to go to was Purdue, Illinois. Purdue with a chance to clinch it outright. Illinois with their biggest game of the season. And uh, we loved Champagne so much the first time we thought it was only right to go. So that made this trip special going into it. A lot of things that happened along the way made this trip special coming out of it. And on the way back when we were driving home, what was it, Thursday? No, Wednesday morning. Uh, you at one point looked at me and were just like, can we just like go through step by step everything that happened on this trip and like acknowledge what happened? So I think it would be fun to share this with our, our audience or our listener base because I think a lot of these elements of the story people might find entertaining. Uh, there you go. I'm going to tee you up and let you lead here. Oh man, where 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 do we start? Uh, first off, we 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 started the trip hot with Gregory slandering Papa Dells. Um, can you can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because I very much enjoyed my slice from Papa Dells. I had two of them. And I thought they were really good. So we had a uh, a very kind gentleman, Brandon Wildman, who uh, pulled up and had pre planned this with us. He he was kind of going to play host for us on this visit once he heard that we were going to Champagne. And we very much appreciated that. We were texting him beforehand, uh, excited to meet him in person. So we had it set. We're going to meet you at Papa Dell's and kick off the trip. We obviously know Papa Dell's is uh, an infamous pizza spot in Champaign. It's their take on deep dish, as Brandon told me. And this is not the first time we had Papa Dell's. This is lost in this. Papa Dell's was the catered food at the Illinois game we went to last year. Mm. We went to Champagne. They have media food, and it was Papa Dell's last year. It was also Papa Dell's this year for the record, but we didn't get any because we'd had it earlier that afternoon. Anyways, so we pull up. It's like lunchtime. It's late lunch. And uh, we were like, what's the move? Like, do we just get like a deep dish or or what? And Brandon was like, well, I think they do buy the slice. 
So we had like an hour left at the end of the lunch hour where you could order Papa Dell's slices by the slice and came out, got some breadsticks with it. Uh, it, it was not like awful by any means, but for how much I've heard about Papa Dell's, I got to say, lazy effort from Papa himself here. Like <laughs> it, 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 you, you know this. It was basically preheated. Like these slices were made three hours earlier popped in the microwave for a minute and then brought out and it like, it didn't taste fresh at all. None of it tasted fresh. That might be on us though, for getting the slice. I think it is. I think it is like, cause Papa Dell's when we got it in the media room last year was very good. That's why my take isn't that Papa Dell's is awful. My take is that Papa Dell's complacent. He's a little mm. comfy right now. Mama Dell needs to get him straight. That's my read on this. Okay. Uh, do you want to comment on the breadsticks? Worse than the pizza. Yeah, bro, I, I have qualities of a Papa Dell breadstick. Large, um, definitely make an impact. Maybe a little bit more show than an actual substance. Mm. Mm. And go good with garlic. Take that for what it is. Mm. Um, but once we have that, we approach the, the, the first spot you got to go to when you get in Champagne. You go, you go straight to Legends. Like we, we all know that. I got the cup. I got the gear from Legends in my last trip. I got to get back to Legends. And at Legends, we had the ability to meet some Purdue fans, some Illinois fans. Our, maybe one of our first experiences of, like, people wanting to take pictures with us, which is an odd experience in itself, but, like, really, really cool. And we immediately order a Jack and Diet just to get things underway. God bless you, Gregory. Thank you. Sorry, I, I heard Jack and Diet and my, my body couldn't handle it. Hey, no, it's okay. it's okay. It's okay. It happens. We immediately sit down and within probably 15 to 20 minutes of sitting down, we get approached with a trivia question. You can't make that up, Gregory. A young gentleman by the name of Johnny pulls up and he says, I got $200 for you guys if you get this question right. This one thing about sleepers, we're never going to back down from some trivia challenge in any setting whatsoever. Greg, yeah. what was the question again? So first off, let's clarify our guy, Johnny. So we, we, this was now like what, 30, 35 minutes into being at legends. And yes. we had gotten comfy. We had posted up at a table with Brandon, with uh, our, our other boy, Colin Dilworth, who has been a longtime family friend of ours who works at Illinois now. And then, uh, a couple of Purdue fans who made the trip for the game and had messaged us that they wanted to meet up before the game it was awesome. So we're, we're kind of feeling ourselves, right? We're posted up. We got our first drink of the day, five deep in the mob. And then uh, like, we also realized I still didn't know you knew this. I, I wasn't sure if this was hostile or friendly territory for me after <laughs> the whole Coleman Hawkins thing. And a, another Illinois fan had just pulled by and basically done a drive by of the, of the table and he drops off shots and says, hey, Jeremy Werner's out back. And I was <laughs> like, whoa. He was kidding for the record. But uh, he took a shot with us and was nice. So, it, again, there was a lot of, like, mischievous looks early of do Illinois fans hate us or like us? I can't tell. So then this guy, Johnny, pulls up. And it wasn't like a, hey, hello, anything. There was no like, hey, I'm a fan of your guys' stuff. Hey, what's up, sleepers? He just pulls up, grabs a chair, posts it right next to us and says, I got $200 for you if you can answer this question. And you and I are like, whoa. The question was, who was the ninth place team in the 2021-2022 Big Ten basketball season? And his proposition to us was, if you get this right, I'll give you $200. If you get this wrong, you have to take Malort shots, and I'll buy you the shots. And immediately upon giving that proposition, you were like, oh, God. And I was like, I love Malort. <laughs> so <laughs> I was I, in. I still don't understand. It was a win-win. Uh, yeah, you you didn't like that. No, Malort is awful. I, I don't care what you say. It's, it's not that bad. Terrible. It's not that bad. You know you're the only person who has ever said that. That's actually extremely inaccurate. At vacation uh, in <laughs> Michigan State football last year, our boy Blake was my Malort guy. We were taking Malort shots that, together. That is true, Blake. Okay. And uh, every non-Chicagoan, you're the only non-Chicagoan that said it like Malort. I'll say that. People got to be mentally tougher. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, so we, we embrace this challenge. Hopefully you've been thinking about it right now. 
uh, our initial gut was it was Michigan or Michigan State because our team stink. And I thought he was trying to play a mind game of like maybe he's a sleeper, sleepers listener. He knows we're Michigan and Michigan State fans, and he's trying to bait us into one of our teams being bad and not knowing it. Uh, we were going to pull the trigger on, I think, Michigan. Yeah. And then Colin, our boy, came in super clutch and was like, wait a second. Greg, you were there. It's the first game of the day. If it's if, if the eight nine seed is the first game of the day, who was in the eight nine game, the first Big Ten tournament you went to? And I'm envisioning you didn't make this trip. I forget what was going on. Um, but Andrew Robeson, best friend, long time, went as sleepers photographer that week. So he was sitting in press row in the photography section on his knees with a camera. He didn't know how to work. And I'm sitting courtside. Watch that was the Keegan Murray tournament. And uh, I am brought back to the day where Michigan blew a, like a 17 point lead and Indiana came back and beat them. So I identified, I identified it was Michigan or Indiana. That was the nine. seed. I just couldn't remember who was the nine. Um, ultimately we had to make a 50, 50 call and we picked Indiana and we were correct. We won two $100 bills. And still took shots in the Lord. Yeah. How'd you think of the shot? By the way, I thought it was fine. I, I think Malore's awful. It's terrible. It just it, it tastes awful. It sits in you, and it's not like taste awful, like uh, like gross tequila or like bottom shelf. It's just legit. Take the three worst tasting things you can think of in your life and mix them together and add a a little punch of heat. <laughs> I I enjoyed it. I really did. Um, but then you we we collectively did not want to take this guy's money. Yeah, because we're like, I mean, that that was fun, man. Let's just take a shot together. And he was insistent. Like, he, he literally – he put the two $100 bills on the ground and then walked away back to the bar. He also told us he was a professional gambler, and I think he's been sending you picks now. Yeah. He's actually been doing pretty good. <laughs> so I appreciate that. So shout out, Johnny. Uh, and ultimately, you did choose to keep the $200. Yeah. I mean, there's only so much I can do to just try to give this guy $200. Uh, at a certain point, we were like, you know, we'll just – well, fun- he's an Illinois fan. We'll funnel this 200 back into the program somehow. More on that later. More more on that coming soon. All right. So we're kicking at Legends. It's it's a great time. Like we got Illinois fans. We got some Purdue fans next to us. Uh, a lot of great stories going on as we enjoy some adult beverages before we go into the game, right? Do our thing. Get a ride to the game. Go in. Do our little walk around. We get on the ground level. And, of course, you're not going to walk into a building with Robbie Hummel and your first mission not be we both have to get an elite dap with Robbie Hummel. Like, that's isn't that what everyone wants to do who's on the court level? Am, I, am I wrong in that regard? It is. Correct. No. It is. So I spot, of course, State Fair Handsome, Robbie Hummel, corner of my eye, suited up, booted up. We're like, let's go say what up to – let's go say what up to him. As we're walking through the front of Orange Crush – we get a couple sleepers, 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 and Gregory turns. And what phrase did you say, Gregory? I said, "Why not us?" <laughs> so I look back and I'm just like, "All right, we can roll with that." Yeah, why not us? I just I didn't know that that call was coming at that time. But as we're walking by, we're getting well, a bunch. I, of- I, I, let me explain. At the time, uh, I felt I, again my energy was off. You know, this walking into the stadium, I'm like, I don't know if this is a home game or a road game. I want this to be a home game. Like, I I purely wanted – this is not a surprise to anyone who's watched. I wanted Illinois to win this game, and I wanted to be embraced by Champagne. That that was my personal goal. You, I said it 11 times to you before we even got to the gym. My number one goal was to reunite and reconcile with Coleman Hawkins. That was yes. my number one goal of this trip. And so we're, we're pulling up, and I'm a little on edge. I don't know what's going to happen. And, uh, yeah, to, to walk immediately in front of the Orange Crush and to be met with, like, excited sleepers chants, uh, to me, one, why not us, as in why not me and Cart? We're here. Why, why not sleepers? Why can't we take this over? Why aren't we embraced by Illinois? And also, too, why not us, as in Illinois? Why not beat Purdue? Why not? We're right here. You wanted this matchup all season long. They're right there served up on a platter. They already cut the nets down. Why not us tonight? And also Kevin Sweeney was right next to us. And I always get a little bit of fuel motivation wise when I'm next to Kevin Sweeney. The future agent of uh, super <laughs> media, Kevin Sweeney. It's it's we're going to force him into it one day. Yeah. Um, so we work our way over 
to Robbie. Uh, the very first thing that happens is as we're about to say what up to Robbie, someone else like literally cuts us off and asks if they could take a picture of them and Robbie. And seeing Robbie's face as he like looks up and sees that we're taking the picture was hilarious. Get our combos, have a generational dab with Robbie Hummel. You know, Greg is undefeated lifetime with those. Uh, gives us shows us love for being hardworking and hilarious, which coming from Robbie Hummel, who literally is the hardest working man in college basketball, definitely pulled at the heartstrings a little bit. I appreciated the kind words. Yeah, Robbie, uh, it, it's crazy that there are like figures as important as Robbie Hummel in college basketball who like, again, I when I was just growing up as a fan, Robbie Hummel was like the best player in the league. So to think that he knows who I am at all and knows of our work at all is insane. Um, I, I think we've told this story before, but like last year, our first encounter with Robbie was at a party at the final four. There's like a couple name brand parties that media members end up going to, and it becomes a big networking event. And uh, you and I try to stay out of things most of the time when we're at those, because we realize we're the least important people in the room. And I, we were like posted up at a corner table just by ourselves. And you know, if, if if the right opportunity happened, if someone walked by, we would introduce ourselves, say hello. But for the most part, we're really staying out of things. Robbie's like one of the only people who's ever approached us and introduced himself. And he like, like I remember last year being baffled in the moment that Robbie Hummel knew who we were always been super nice to us. You tried to pitch him on the, the Hummies bar idea you've had for years and said, we want to invest in it. And he loved that idea. So uh, I think we we've kept a, a cordial relationship, a mutual I don't, I don't even want to call it respect because I have no idea what Robbie thinks of us. But <laughs> we, re, we respect the hell out of him and uh, an admiration from our side for sure. So when we saw he was doing the game, we wanted to go say what up. And, uh, yeah, once again, met with extreme kindness. I think he is both the hardest working guy in this industry and also the nicest person in this industry that I've encountered. Yeah, also might be the tallest, which is I, I really wanted to come for that title. Uh, I think Hummel might have me. Do you hurts. think Hummel knows that you invented State Fair Handsome in his honor? Do you think he knows that? Because he'd like, like, we know he knows some of our bits. Like, he messaged me after the Juwan song and said, I'm cracking up at that song. That's hilarious. You know, I don't know if he knows, but if he does find out, I just hope he knows that it's a term of endearment, which Purdue fans don't want to make it that way. I want to be State Fair Handsome. But okay. shout out to Robbie Hummel. Really nice dude, obviously. Um, and as Greg said, because this, this helps me transition to the next part of our, our adventure, and I think it's fine to say this, but one thing about the media seats is that if you're not, you know, the Kevin Sweeney's of the world, the Jeff Goodman's, you know, th those type of media members, you don't get courtside seats typically, right? And even if you do get courtside seats, Greg and I, and Greg can say if this is wrong or not. There's something about actually sitting with the fans that just makes the game more enjoyable to watch, in my opinion. So we always try to, like, scout out some seats that are not the media seats that we can sit at, even if they might be worse seats than the media seats. We just want to be, like, in the actual crowd and environment. And our boy Colin Dilwer hooked us up with some seats for us that uh, were great seats, by the way. But as we're walking up to our seats – we have a pin. We have a we have a moment, Gregory, where we pass the whole Hawkins family, mm -hmm. like except except Mr. Hawkins. Like we 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 pass every Hawkins family member mm -hmm. except Rod Hawkins, Mr. Hawkins, Coleman's father. Well, the, um, let's not forget it was senior night, right? So it, it, like, it, while, it was senior night. while we were doing all the things we just talked about, while we were taking the lap, saying what up to Sweeney, saying what up to the Orange Crush, saying what up to Hummel, while all of that is happening. Illinois like seven seniors are getting honored one by one on the court. They do it pregame. So it was leading up. Like it started with like, Oh, and Quincy Gary is here and Luke Goody's here and Terrence Shannon's here. And like, finally, like it's as we're walking out of the, the floor up the stairs, it's Coleman Hawkins. And we just so happen to be right by the Hawkins family section, like the extent, like Coleman's direct family was on the court. His extended family was in the stands directly next to us as we're walking up in this moment. Right. And I, and obviously given the situation, I thought they might strike Greg and I would have to, I'd have to react in that situation. I don't know what that situation would be, but uh, I think it was Coleman's uncle, like said, like called us out by name and was like, what's up? Like, I appreciate, like, I see your guys' stuff. 
nice to meet you guys. Uh, we'll we'll chat sometime, talk after the game, da da da. So we're after that moment, I feel like a little bit of weight was lifted off Gregory's shoulders, and that we might be good with the Coleman Hawkins family. And this is where we're like, okay, after the game, we're gonna go say what up to Coleman. If there is any like issues, tension, or whatever, just bury that because at the root of this, we love Coleman Hawkins. Mm-hmm. Like that's all that's always been been a thing. Um, <laughs> and I gotta tell, I gotta tell the one part about all, as we're walking to our seats, some guy says, "Man, like." Points at points me at my chest as I'm walking back. I'm like, man, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate what you say. Shifts to Gregory, and he goes, "Hey, but you, you give us a hard time." <laughs> and that was like the theme, and I felt like I got off easy. Everyone's like saying, "Oh yeah, good, good work, Carter." But everyone's like, "Greg, you're really tough on us." Yeah, I, I'm fine with that dynamic, though. I'm perfectly yeah. fine with that dynamic. Yeah. All right, so we go through the game, watch the game. Watch the first half. Not, nothing like really truly exciting, anything like that. A couple of people said what up to us, take some more pictures with some Illinois fans. That was like really, really cool. Then we get to halftime and we do the halftime thing. If anyone wants a, a sneak peek about what Sleepers does at halftime of basketball games, we don't record typically, or we do maybe, but the first thing we do is we get to the concourse. Well, I'll, I'll, let we me jump to- in on that. Oh, please. I think – Depending on what happens in the game, we do. Like, we don't set out pre-planning let's record or not. The reason I didn't want to record anything at halftime of this game was because had we recorded at halftime, I would have complained about how horrible of a basketball game it was. And I didn't – I'm trying to (laughs) censor myself and not overly criticize these teams when they don't deserve it. Uh, I would have just been going off about how Painter was sabotaging Purdue's chances in this game. And thank God we didn't record that because in the end it, it wore them down and he outcoached me. But I was, I, you heard this from me just sitting there. I was wildly underwhelmed with Purdue in the first half, thought it was a stinker. And I was also underwhelmed with Illinois that they didn't create more separation. A six point game when Purdue laid a stinker, I was like, wow, this is a low level basketball game. Yeah. And I was like, you know, we're going to defuse the situation. We're going to get you a seltzer and a jersey. Like that's, that's the, that's the diffuse Gregory starter kit. Mm. Like if you have a child and you give him a pacifier, yeah. that calms him down. If you want to calm down Gregory, get him a seltzer and a jersey. That it's like putting, the- yeah, it's like putting Bluey on. That's what you did for me. You're like, yeah. Greg, yeah. follow me. And I was like, yeah. okay. It'll, it'll hold you. It'll hold him over. He'll entertain himself. So we get, we get. We I get just realized with- you actually did that. Like it wasn't even just, it was my favorite seltzer. Like it was a black can truly, man. You actually did diffuse me like a toddler. Yeah. It, it worked too, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we get him his tall boy black can truly strawberry lemonade seltzer right and he, he's he's calming now he cracks it he's feeling good and then we spot the jersey section we're like what we had two hundred dollars from our trivia let's funnel this back into the illinois program for, no first expense it <laughs> we that was a, a constant line from the trip was Cart and i looking at each other going expense it because this this is the first season that we have ever made money off of sleepers let's just call it what it is literally up until uh up until mid-november of this year we had not made a dime off of anything sleepers oriented all the money that i had made in college basketball was personal work um anything carter had done was really love of the game correct me if i'm wrong but yeah i don't think you were really much money at all other than the spartan rivals writing so we got over the hump like we could finally monetize youtube in the middle of november and we've been making money. Nothing great. Trust me, nothing great. But, like, enough that we're trying to be smart and scale this into a business. And I think we've done a good job with that. But this was the first time we were on the road, like, wait a second. We have a sleepers card. So, like, we did at Papa Dell's, like, put that on the sleepers card. Let's host our host a little bit uh, at the game. <laughs> it's like, okay, maybe a beverage. Is it we expense that? <laughs> and so we get to the jersey stand. And we're debating, like, uh, do we need a jersey? You're trying to toddler me. I get it. And it, at a certain point, it was, well, yeah, we can expense that. And then we remembered that we have $200 from Joey in the pocket. That we can funnel back into the, this. We're, 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 we're stimulating the program <laughs> by buying these jerseys, okay? And then we had this dialogue. First of all, they didn't have a Dane Danger jersey. I immediately go into a bad place. Which disgusting is like, disgust we we asked them to look like they were digging through the there was nothing no respect for dane and like i don't mean to do this there was nico moretti jerseys yeah 
Like, come think, on. Think right. about that, folks. No, Dane Jersey, insane. Um, but like the the same people that we are, Gregory gets a Coleman Hawkins jersey and I get a Dre Gibbs Longhorn. Uh, great jersey, <laughs> by the way. Um, so we get those. Uh, we do we do some more chats, talking to people, get saying what up. Uh, people saying they appreciate Gregory's Dub Club, appreciate Super Media. It's all it's all fun and dandy. Um, the, all the of a sudden, thing, I, we're making this so long, and I'm sorry I'm jumping in, but the the coolest thing about all of the people that came up and introduced themselves to us was um it felt like this time compared to in the past we had more different ways that people enjoyed our content and our work like in the past it was like oh you guys are the guys i watch you on field of 68 Uh, you guys are college hoops to go and this year there were people who were like i watch every sleepers recap or like brag i i look forward to the dub club every single day or like, I don't know. It just, it felt like there was more versatility this year to the way that we have put our footprint in college basketball. And as we were reflecting on that in real time, it was like a realization, a really cool moment for both of us of, wow, we haven't realized how much we've grown in a year. And that is the coolest feeling ever. Yeah, it's the coolest feeling ever until the feeling after the game. Can we skip to that? Can you take over that part? What what happened after the game? What part? This is oh. when everything this is when everything unfolded. I mean, yeah. So the game ends. Great second half. I mean I <laughs> great second half. Purdue champ shit. We just kept looking at each other being like, champ shit. Braden Smith is a dog. Zach Eady's a superstar. Lance Jones hit the shot. Fletcher's hitting floaters. Like one by one by one by one, Purdue star showed up and said, nah, ring me. And it was cool. Like it is sometimes you forget you're just a fan. And we at, the, at our hearts, we are fans of good basketball and Big Ten basketball. And to be in the building and watch that happen, watch the champs win it outright was really cool. So the game ends and, uh, you know, it, Illinois fans are kind of sadly filing out. And, you know, the, the best thing with a media credential, other than obviously being able to work the game, is you get to hang around after you get to go down on the court and just sort of be there. Right. Like I had last year when Purdue clinched, like you saw me, I sprinted to the court and I'm like, come find me. I'm sitting there. The Brandon Newman's right next to me. There's confetti on our shoulders. It was great. Uh, This, this time it was a little different because Purdue was on the road and it was kind of becoming an empty arena, but we were like, let's just go down. Let's just linger. Let's just see. And we go down, we get on the court. We're just kind of standing there waiting. The players are all in the locker room and one by one Purdue players start filing out. Um, We did, I had eyes on Coleman because remember my whole goal here was to reconcile. And I also had a Coleman Jersey. Remember I'm, I have a Coleman Hawkins orange Jersey hanging out of my pocket as we go on the court. Coleman's doing a walk around the arena. He was taking pictures with the orange crush since it's his last time. And then he goes back in the tunnel. None of the players are out. We're like, we'll just sit here and wait. So uh, the first player out of the tunnel was Braden Smith. Love that. He goes to the family section. I think he probably talked to who I believe was his mom and dad for like no less than 25 minutes. Like all the other players are still in the tunnel. Braden Smith's just talking to mom and dad, chopping it up for 25 minutes. We are not trying to be overbearing, but we're also like full-blown lingering, scoping this out. Like our mission is to get Braden. So we're on the court. Basically, the row of seats on one bench is right there. Braden and his family are in the first row behind the bench. We're probably 10 feet away from him. We're waiting. We wait about 10 minutes. We're just waiting. In that 10 minutes, uh, a good um, again, a good number of people came up and just introduced themselves and said, thank you. Like We got to talk to uh, Bobby Riddell from Purdue, who is awesome, Bobby Buckets. like We had no idea he watches our stuff and kind of chopped it up with him on Purdue's chances in March. That was really cool. Uh, a couple different Illinois quote unquote staff members came up to us. Um, no, no, like assistant coaches or Brad or anything like that, but uh, like the GAs, pe- people that work with the program on a daily basis came up. Uh, one of them did tell us, <laughs> he was like, I tried to tell Coleman, man, like they like you. Like I was, I was telling him, let it go. And Coleman was like, nah, F that. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know. I'm still looking to reconcile Coleman, but uh, we're waiting for Braden anyways. And uh, you, you almost imploded. I mean, one of my, like I said, one of my biggest downfalls, I had, I had one large seltzer. All right. So like 
that induces bathroom tendencies for me. So like you said, Brayden is talking this whole entire time. And I'm not going to like jump in there while he's talking to his family, obviously. So I'm like, I'm going to go to the bathroom and come back, which you thought was an awful play. Ended up working out. Got there. Brayden was still talking to his family members. Um, and then as he's walking away from his family members, like, yo, Brayden turns his head, sees us. Obviously, he recognizes us. So we go, we start chopping it up with them, start talking about the celebrations. And it was funny. He's like, yeah, I, I got caught in between like doing five different ones. So I just did like the first three that came to my mind because he proceeded to hit the night night, the, uh, the this, the three ball, and then looked at Robbie Hummel and said, ring me. So it's a, a, a pretty cool moment there. Uh, we had some banter too about the DM that he sent us. We, we threw out the whole good defense thing, took the picture too, obviously, but just a, just a really cool, it's a really cool dude. And, and Greg walked away saying, yeah, that's going to be my favorite player in the country for the next two years. He's there. Yeah. And he's my favorite player in the country now. No, I, I don't think people get like, <laughs> I don't think, pe- I still don't think people get how good Braden is as a player, but regardless of the player stuff, I couldn't love this kid's mentality more. Like, I just couldn't. I, you talk to him, you – I mean, just anything. Like, he he cares so much about basketball. He knows the game at such a high level. He sees things at such a high level. He, he is so skilled as a scorer and an assist guy, and his greatest strength is his mentality. Like, I, I, I it's so rare to find a player like that. And uh, I'm just so excited. Like, man, we get, we get in theory, two more years of watching Braden Smith in college and to know that that's a guy who, like, is an ally of ours is the coolest thing to me. Um, and, and truly mind-blowing, man. Like, I, I can't believe any of these people know who we are. I can't believe that. I, 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 still, I still have a very, very hard time coming to grips with that. Like, my dog, we just watched Braden Smith do the swaggiest celebration I've seen in, like, seven years in the Big Ten. And then 20 minutes after the game, he's like, Gee, Cart, like that shit is insane to me. It's absolutely insane to me. Insane. So then after this, we we chop it up with Braden for a little bit. And then he was out first because like he didn't like, I don't think he like showered or did anything like the other player. Other players like showered, came out dressed or whatnot. Braden was still a full uniform and whatnot. So he goes back, does whatever he's doing. We're still at this time. We had a goal. We're waiting for Coleman. Like we are gonna chop it over Coleman. We are gonna, it, it's gonna happen. Uh we're, we're going to smooth this over, reconcile, whatever word you want to use. We never really got to see Coleman. Uh, didn't get to see Tyler Underwood either. Didn't really get to see any Illinois players that really came out. Quincy Garrier was out there. Lance Jones was out for Purdue. Um, but we didn't really get to see any Illinois players, which sucked. because we They, didn't they weren't lingering. Coleman. I mean, that's I, I don't blame them for, like, after an emotional loss like that. They mostly got up and out of there, I think. But. Yeah, true. So then we're like, all right, maybe it's time to make our way out. But then we want to say what up to Edie. Uh, because he, you know, he follows us on Twitter. Uh, he had actually DM Greg, I think, two weeks ago or whatnot. So we were like, yeah, we want to say what up to Edie before we head out here. Obviously, Edie is the biggest attraction after these games. Like, everyone is lined up to see him. Everyone is uh, on pictures, whatever, you know, that, that whole scenario. His mother's there, of course. Um, she is, you know, doing her thing, chopping up with her son. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I got to go, guys. I got to go. And we're in the tunnel. And, like, as he's walking by the tunnel, he literally sees us, like, posted up on the wall and notices us and comes and chops it up with us, daps us up. Craziest dap of my life. Never felt smaller. Ever. Ever. Literally ever. He engulfed me. Pause. Um, yeah, I was I, – I, I've never tried to stand up straighter than ever, and I think I got just above his hip. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. insane. And, 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 then you, and then this is – this all culminates to maybe one of the greatest moments of my life right here um Edie says yeah what's up bro like I saw I saw uh I saw you hoop like you hoop you were hooping a little bit and I was like yeah or I think Greg he said something like yeah he used to play like he went to he played basketball in college he's like no 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 I saw like on Twitter the other day you were playing basketball referring to my men's league picture so say what you want but the national player of the year is tapped in with men's league Carter Elliott and you should be too that's that's the greatest win of your life. Great. Truth. Up until this point. I mean, marriage. I'm not going to 1A it. It's one. <laughs> but <laughs> the same, talking about me. Who okay. But, uh, yeah. Don't don't want a it. But on the scale of like likelihood, marriage was a lot likelier than this. Oh, oh a thousand percent. <laughs> a thousand percent. 
But yeah, and and like we just proceeded to just chop it up with Edie. Like we were talking about the game. Um, he let us know that like he wanted to like come on a show sometime. So like that was just one of just the nicest dudes ever. Took a picture with us, everything about it. Like it was just like genuine chopping up conversation. Like we were literally just shooting the shit about the game, about the season, uh, about the stuff we do. Like it was genuinely cool. I, I truly believe that if he didn't have to leave to like get on the bus, he would have just like kicked it kicked it with us for a minute. I think Zach is the nicest, kindest person in college basketball. That's my read. Yeah. And when, I know he like, has every reason, like kind of not to be. He just is. Yeah. He's so selfless. Like none of none of the stuff on him, like autographs and taking pictures, none of that is manufactured at all. Like he is just he is out to be a force of good for the sport of college basketball. And it honestly, like, after meeting him and getting to talk to him a little bit, doesn't it kind of like hurt your heart a little bit that there are so many people that wanna like get personal and antagonize him and not embrace him. Like I just, yeah. I can't believe there's this player who one is as good of a player as he is, but two is as great of a person as he is. It's so well documented. And the fact that his name is just constantly caught up in like slanderous, like, Oh, he's just big. Like, Oh, he's a foul merchant, all this nonsense. It's just, it's wasting such a singularly impressive human being that I, uh, I just have this whole new appreciation for it because it's all authentic. It's all real. And also I've never, I don't know that I've met a person in my life at any level who's a better eye contact guy than Zach Eady. And maybe that might be a thing by design because like he's up there so much that if he wants to have a personal connection, he needs to look down. But like, I mean, whichever one of us was talking, like Zach was locked in. I I couldn't believe it. Like (laughs) he's just such a good human being. It was crazy. Just nicest dude. And this is like literally coming off of a game where he's just like, Armani hands where it comes in fouls him for four times in four minutes. People are yelling F U E D like all this stuff. And the dude's just like, just nicest dude ever. Truly the nicest dude ever. I also want to know Zach knows what Braden is. And that's why I'm all the way in on Purdue's Mark. Cause we like, at a certain point we looked at him, we were like, dog, Braden is that boy. And he was just like, Oh yeah. 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 Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it ended, our, our conversation with Zach ended, uh, I'm not going to lie, I did hit him with a, hey, I'm going to see you in Phoenix. And he turned back and it's like, gave me a head nod, walked away. I am uh, I hope it comes true. I'm just saying. Yeah. So uh, in, in this span of like 30 to 45 minutes, we had the thing with Braden, we had the thing with Edie. Everything is just, everything's going smoothly besides the fact that we didn't get to see Coleman like we wanted to see Coleman we want to see Mr. Hawkins we want to see everybody like we wanted to there was you know if if Coleman's sister wanted to beat our ass like we we're gonna let her beat our ass like let's see we're just gonna get to the end of this uh fast forward we go to Murphy's afterwards so we're not leaving Champagne without going to Murphy's that's a, that's a must a must go every single time got to meet some fans and some discord members there with us as well had some drinks with them expensed it felt great um get a dm from Coleman Hawkins dad and he's like uh sorry I didn't get to see you guys uh just wanted to smooth things over there's no like beef between uh anyone in our family or you look forward to talking to you guys in the future so that really just wrapped the trip up and brought everything full circle so it's a win it's a win I and respect to Coleman's dad for sending us that uh and again we met his uncle it was great I I I have been constantly adamant that I love the Hawkins is the Hawkins family Coleman, all of it. Uh, I'm still crushed. We didn't reconcile with Coleman himself. I'm still, that was my number one goal. And as cool as everything else was on this trip, it, it's hanging over me a little bit. It is. Do we got to go to the big 10 tournament? Might not be too late. Um, like just go with just the idea to reconcile with Coleman Hawkins. So like, if we do it within the first five minutes, we leave. Oh, I would. I'm game for that. That I this season can't end without me talking to Coleman Hawkins, and at least I I don't even know. He might not receive it well. He might be like, "Greg, I hate you," and I would be okay with that. That would be some closure. I just need to tell him, like Coleman, I didn't mean anything personal from this. I will always be a huge fan of yours. I need to say that to him in person. I see. I want a jersey swap to occur. It's got to be reciprocated. It might be though. It might be. I know, but, but that's, like, that's it, why but... we missed our chance, man. We and this, not to put it back on the game. This is Illinois' fault, okay? <laughs> because if Illinois wins this game, we're at cams with Coleman. 
And not that I didn't love how our night ended. We had a great night after the game. But, like, we should have been in a booth in the corner with Coleman or at least him dunking on us or something. And instead, you know, we didn't get the opportunity with any of that. Uh, Terrence Shannon did walk by while we were talking to Zach Eady. And uh, I felt a little bad we didn't, like, at least dab him up or say hello because we met him in Champagne last year. <laughs> yeah, well, we were talking to Edie, and also he seemed kind of down. Obviously, yeah. he didn't play well, so – I, I just kind of let it, let it go. Yeah, I just I feel like we kind of gave off vibes of like the girl who moves on to the starting quarterback when her ex boyfriend got benched. Like I feel like that's what we were doing. I hope we never do that, please. Yeah, I'm just saying. Okay, now I feel bad. I know that's what like we Terrence because we met Terrence first before these guys and I had only nice things to say about him. We loved him, and then yeah. he, he he puts up a stinker. We're talking to Edie, and not even a what up. <laughs> Not in, like that's that's on us that's on us okay that's on us we gotta be better but um yeah like what i did in the car was i wrapped it all up in like a one sense elevator like spit uh, pitch type thing we got to champagne we took pictures with people people yelled for us we dapped up and kicked it with robbie hummel robbie hummel knows who i am we kicked it with brayden smith Braden Smith knows who we are. Zach Eady knows I hoop in men's league. I dapped up Zach Eady. And then I wrapped that all up with a DM from Coleman Hawkins' dad. And my glass was never empty the whole time I was there. Anything I mean, anything from the post game? I mean, we went back to Murphy's, which is the bar my daughter is named after. Yes, that's a real story. Uh, went back to Murphy's, basically closed it down. Basically, I mean, we got out before close, but basically closed it down. And uh, yeah, we we had a couple tables worth of fans that came through. Illinois fans, not saying our fans, but Illinois people who were familiar with us and just talked hoop. A lot of good ball talk. Uh, did discover that Io Desumu maybe maybe a little fraudulent. Maybe. I, yeah, There's I, let, let's just say there will be a long think piece one day about the disrespect that Kofi Coburn gets. Illinois fans were talking crazy on Kofi and then wanted us to look up some game logs on IO and Andre Corbello outplayed him in the March loss. Insane. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, that was fun. And then, yeah, the, the night ends with us walking. We told the story on one big thing, but had a real emotional moment where I, uh, we were given a, a beautiful gift of a listener telling us how much we mean to him on a personal level, which means the world. Uh, we also, there, there were some impressions going on. Yeah, there was a, a, a an elite Brad Underwood impression, mm. um, and it, this whole time um, he's like he's telling us all this. He's you know we're we're talking about Illinois hoop, and then as we're like exiting for the night, he hits us with a yeah, I was on Jimmy Fallon. I do impressions, and we're like, you didn't lead with that elite impressions too. By the way, the Brad Underwood was perfection. Uh, he killed it. And then in the span of like all that time right there, we have the emotional moment, we have impressions, and then we have another uh, another gentleman who pulls up with a Coleman Hawkins astronaut t-shirt for us, which I should have wore on today's episode, that's on me. But just like a, I don't know, just like one of the coolest trips experiences. I know we love champagne. We, we actually joke about it that we ever had like offices, like Supers Media offices and can afford a private jet. Like we would have our offices in Champaign. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I even, I threw out like it needs to be the middle ground between us. So I need you and Meg to move to Lincoln. That's, that's my goal right now. Okay. I threw it out there for some feelers. <laughs> and I don't think it was well received. It was right? not well received whatsoever. No. no. All right. Um, should we, should we finish with letter grades? Like we often letter grade teams effort. What was the letter grade of this trip to Champaign? Actually, grade grade the trip to Champagne overall, then grade your effort and my effort, or your performance and my performance. Okay, um, I'd give myself for my performance. I'd give myself like a B plus. I think I was pretty. I was pretty good. I was pretty on my game. Obviously, the peeing before going to see Braden thing could have ended extremely badly, but it did not. Um, I feel like I was pretty calm, collected the whole entire time. Did what I had to do. Um, the whole entire trip, I would get, um, I'm not even going to try to even break it down. It's an A for me. 
No, no a. plus sign, just an A, no plus sign. It would have been a plus if we got to talk to Coleman. Yeah, you're right. Oh, oh you're right. I still have to go A plus, but I just have a personal thing I got to do with Coleman. Uh, a plus trip. I'm going to give you an A. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you a B. Um, Myers Leonard drank you under the bus. No, no, that's he, what happened here. No, he I didn't. mean, Myers Leonard was put on the jumbotron not once but twice in this game, and the first time, so they they show Myers Leonard grabs a beer, full beer by the way. That thing's chugged in two seconds. It's gone. It's done. Everyone claps. Wow! I look at you like wow. That was a that was a quick chug. He grabs a second beer, down. Like before you could snap your fingers, I looked at you and said, I've never seen that before. And I've seen you, you claim you're one of the best beer chuggers on earth. I've seen you. I've never seen that before in front of a stadium full of fans. The unexpected nature of the second one. That was first half Myers Leonard. Incredible. How about second half Myers Leonard. They go back to it. He didn't know this one was coming. He wasn't prepared. Grabs mm. a beer, chugs it. And already, dr- and already drank beer. They cut away from him. He begged for the camera back to do a second again. I just, the fortitude, the performance was impressive. And then you're sitting here shrugging it off saying, I can do that. I'll show you. You never showed me. Yeah. Well, just let this be known. He's a bright lights guy. That's good for him. I, I do. I do it in silence. Okay. I do. I can. But you don't though. I think you're an all talk guy. No, no do it guy. Okay. Well, just let this be known. I, I do have a lot of work to do today and it's 10 30 AM. So I'm not going to do it right now, but just know later there'll be a video sent to you. And there'll be four full beers, by the way, full beers, okay? And I will do those four in a row faster than he probably did his two. This is the third consecutive day that you've told me that would happen. Hasn't happened. I've been in hell. For that reason, you get a B. Uh, Champagne itself, A+. Illinois trip, A+. I get a C- minus because I I didn't do my main objective with Coleman. And also, you treated me like a toddler, and I didn't even realize it until now. It might. Did you say C minus? Yeah. Can I be? Can I be very more critical of you? <laughs> sure. It might be a D plus because you also allowed your tummy to hurt because of canes. Yeah, I got duped. I got duped into thinking I needed canes when I didn't need canes. Classic. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna apologize for trying to force feed canes. <laughs> <laughs> like that's it's always gonna happen. Thanks, Champagne. It's a great time. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this decompression session from uh, all the fun things we got to do. Ugh. You like that decompression session? Did I just go up a level? Yeah, C minus. Okay. I appreciate that. Uh, the next time we'll be on site for something, we'll be at the Final Four in Phoenix. More to come. But uh, let us know if there's something you specifically want from us content wise. If you like the vlog style stuff, if there's something else, uh, let us know. We can try to make it happen for you. We have some big plans in March. We're very excited for that uh, may or may not include at least one name that was mentioned in this entire story.